lighting. And um, I will also show you some of the visualizations that I've pre-programmed in here for you. The daylighting component in this is 3.6. And the way it works is that it will, uh, there'd be a sensor inside the zone. And depending on how much illuminance is on that sensor, it will dim the electric lights accordingly. So you should see a fair amount of electric light savings depending on how much glazing you have and where the sensor is located. One quick note is that this program uses a pretty basic kind of daylight model. It's called a split flux model. And it is an approximation of the amount of daylight you'll get in the zone, but it's really um, not the most accurate model. Um, it's particularly for complex geometry, it breaks down rather quickly. And um, you should know that there's a whole nother thing, a uh, set of simulations we haven't gone through at all this semester, uh, which is actually packaged with Honeybee um, and it's called Radiance. You can see it up here. And uh, there's a whole nother set of, um, of engine, simulation engines and uh, templates and um, recipes for making daylight models. That's a whole nother class. We're not going to go into it here. What we're going to do is approximate the daylighting in your zone using the built-in split flux method in uh, Honeybee Energy. So to do that, um, we've got this daylight control component and we uh, the, the room is already hooked up to it. But in order to simulate this, you will need to plug the output into this uh, component right here. And then you need to locate a sensor point. To do this, and this is an important step, um, I think I've built one in here. Is this internalized? Yeah, it is. So, um, but probably you won't want to use this particular one. Uh, what I'm going to do is quickly bake the floor. Actually, I'm going to um, just bake the wireframe here so you can see this that and then I'm going to turn this off so we can actually see what we're doing here okay and I'm gonna put a point down at a corner here just for the sake of argument now we've got glazing all the way around here and that glazing will allow daylight in and um, the electric lights should probably be able to be turned off for much of the day much of the year what we want to do is to locate the sensor point for the daylight dimming at the darkest part of the room so that we make sure that we've always got enough light for someone to see. And in this particular zone, I would probably estimate that the darkest part of the room is either somewhere along in this corner here or kind of in the middle of the room here. I'm going to just assume that it's in the middle of the room for this. And I'm going to draw a diagonal here and I'm going to move my point to the midpoint up there and then I'm going to move it a little bit there. This is not an exact science, but there's my point and it is on the floor in what I am estimating is the darkest part of the room. That's the way I would like you to do this as well. I'm going to then assign my point, where is it, here, uh, set one point, bang, and um, there it is. I'm getting a warning here saying sensor point for room, for zone one does not lie within the, ro the room volume. It may be that this is, this point is on the floor rather than inside the room. And I can't remember if this the list of point objects that align that align with the input rooms and assign the position of daylight sensors in the room. This point should lie within the room volume and warning won't be thrown. No daylight controls assigned for any point that lies outside. If unspecified, the sensor will be assigned to the center of the room at 0 0.8 meters above the floor, which is kind of desk height. Um, okay, so I probably need to just raise this up a little bit. If I want, say this is like a gallery and people are walking around, I probably want to know what that is on the floor. 
if it is a working space with desks, I might want it at um, 800 millimeters, like that uh, warning said. Um, I'm going to just assume it's on the floor, so I'm going to just raise it up 0 0.01 and see. Yeah, so the warning went away. Good. Okay. Um, the illumination set point is by default set at 300 lux. Uh, I'm just going to keep it there for the sake of argument. Um, we can talk about this in class. And then the uh, control fraction is 100% or 1, meaning that 100% of the electric lights in the zone will dim with daylight. Minimum power in and out um, is going to be set to 0, and we should be good to go. So run this and hopefully you'll see a difference in the amount of electric light that your zone uses. So I come over here and lo and behold, my third number, which was something like 14 before, is now 4.55. So I've pretty dramatically reduced it along with my total EUI here. And notice now I've got my heating way down, my cooling's way down, my lighting's way down. The only thing left is equipment and we'll talk about what to do about that a little bit later in class um, notice also all of these guys i have disabled just for the sake of running this template more quickly um, but i'm going to enable these so you can see um, all of the visualizations that i've pre-programmed in here for you um, it will take a little bit of time because there's quite a lot of data and meshes going through the pipeline oh, but there it is so let's see um, one easy way by the way if you're kind of curious um, which components here control which of those graphs you can click uh, to click on this icon up here that only draws when you select the component and then if you select this last one you'll be able to see which ones are controlling which outputs. Just a little hint there. Okay, so let's take a look at these one by one. We've already talked about the load balance. We've talked about the operative temperature. We've talked about cooling energy and heating energy. We've talked about, oh, we haven't talked about this one. So this is a new one this week. I added um, window total transmitted solar radiation. So this one might be a good one to compare where you, your baseline run is compared to your optimal um, solar um, to see if you're admitting sun when you want it and you're rejecting it when you don't need it. Uh, here you can see the so total transmitted solar radiation as a heat map. This is the um, typical day for each month. Uh, in this one, uh, I think the, the run we did was for the dynamic exterior shade, the Venetian blind. And so you can see it's mainly, uh, you know, um, not allowing very much radiation. The scale is from zero to three kilowatt hours. So uh, almost no radiation is getting through those blinds. Um, here we've got infiltration and uh, ventilation losses and that's from the economizer and then this is from natural ventilation and then over here we've got the ventilation air change rates which are zero in this particular case we've got lighting electricity so now check this out whereas before it almost looked like a piano keyboard with so much um, lighting energy used during the daytime now almost all of that daytime use is blue meaning zero uh, energy is being used because the lights are turned off when they're not required. That's our daylight dimming that we just looked at. Then there's the uh, equipment and the uh, fan energy. So that's kind of an overview of these graphs. And in cl for class, I would definitely like you to be able to interpret them, uh, compare where you started compared to where you've ended up and um, I think that is it though. The last thing is to make sure that you print 
a um, a uh, an image of the zone both from I think I said in the assignment from the southeast and from the northwest or maybe it's the southwest and northeast but in any case um, so that we can see in class what your windows look like um, and what shading strategies you have adopted okay well good luck with the assignment let me know if you have any questions and i will see you in class next week mm -hmm.